us pray. O Lord, give me the tongue of the learned, that I may know what I ought to say, and if there be any word good for the use of edifying, give it, that thou mayest minister grace unto the hearers. Grant that I may speak boldly, I open my mouth wide, O Lord, do thou put it in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I just spent a long week in the, in the extremely humid heat. Every time I walked into a room with air conditioning, it became apparent to me, very apparent about how humid it was outside as it all just melted away. The only problem was then having to walk back out into it and getting pummeled in the face. Each time I came in or, or went out, I let out an audible yet involuntary gasp. It's funny because each time after my body got acclimatized to that heat, it wasn't bad, just a part of the environment. It's amazing what our bodies can get used to when we need them to. As always, it was an amazing week. It, it is always extremely fulfilling pouring oneself out so completely to a group of people that they are glowing by the end. This is, what I, uh, this is why I do it, because people on fire in the right way is infectious to all that they encounter. One time that really sticks out was getting to sit down with a friend of mine who was having a hard time reckoning her political beliefs with her religious beliefs. It was really bothering her that she could not square the circle. She, go, she goes to a very liberal college, and she is in a very liberal major, which brings up very liberal issues. St. Michael's Conference is very traditional. Everyone dresses up for church, the kids dress up for class, and they stand up when the teacher enters the room. It's that kind of uh, uh, traditional. So she was having a really hard time in put, with the juxtaposition of her daily life and the faith, especially, that, um, that's given at the, at the conference. And we sat down to talk. And our talk came to mind as I sat down with, with the text of our lessons today. Jesus asked his disciples, who are both students and friends, who do the people say that I am? And they gave him a survey of what the people were saying about him. But then he asked the disciples, what do you say? And Peter weighs in, you are the Christ of God. This is the right answer, but there were implications to this that still needed to be addressed. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus had to redefine what being the Christ entails. And once he gives them the proper understanding, he can show them what that means for them. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake, he will save it. This actually follows uh, nicely with my counsel to her. She was contemplating going to a church that was more in line with her way of thinking. I told her that it may indeed make her more comfortable initially, but eventually she would either grow tired of being told how accepting the church is, or she would be formed into its image. I told her that she should never leave a church if the whole faith is preached. The faith should make us uncomfortable. It should push us to places we don't necessarily want to go. It should challenge our way of thinking to the end that is not our ways that are sought, but God's. Any church that conforms to the will of the world is opposed to the will of God, ultimately, and does the people little good. 
comfort all the time is rarely good for the soul. But we both agreed that her empathy for the people who are feeling marginalized by the church is not misplaced. Her heart broke for these people because typically the church's response to those with whom they disagree is rarely edifying. We end up being unable to differentiate the sinner from the sin. And even if we can, our actions show that we cannot. And this is a problem. The perception of those with whom the church disagrees is that they are not loved by the church. And this is where our Old Testament lesson comes in. I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of compassion and supplication, so that when they look upon him whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him. As members of the church, we have the obligation to confront sin not to ignore it, to confront it with com without compromise. However, we often fail to recognize that when we tell people not to do the things which the world tells, uh, with, with which the world has no qualms, we are wounding them. We are in, in their minds telling them that they are less than human because they are being denied basic human rights in their minds. Emotions run high when this happens. No one likes to be told that they're less than. As the church, we have to remember this, because if all of a sudden the church as a whole began to attack our own personal sins and to marginalize us for the many times we fall to the same sins, we, have, we would probably have a different attitude on how we treat those with whom we differ. Now, I'm not saying we're wrong. I'm just saying we can do better. If anyone ever goes away from an encounter with the church, they should never part with a feeling other than the fact that God loves them and that we love them enough to help them through their sins if they are willing to work toward overcoming them. On that day, there shall be a, a fountain open for the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and uncleanness. It was amazing to see the change in demeanor of, of my friend after we spoke. I never compromised the faith, but, it, but I showed her that I still love her. Sin is hard, and we are horribly addicted to it. But as we all take up our crosses and daily follow Jesus, it's good to know that we are loved by God as we work to purge that which offends him. We walk around in a world where we have become immune, you know, the church tells us this and the world tells us this, and we walk around and then when we're in the midst of them, we become like walking in that horribly hot, humid weather I was walking in all week. We become used to it. But then when we walk into the in out in out of it, we're just it all washes away, only to walk out and be struck in the face again. That's the times we remember. But all the times when we're walking in the midst of it, we need to remember and to love those with whom are, love those walking in the midst of it as well. Because the love of God should never be in doubt. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.